Hey everyone! So today we're going to be looking at what my philosophy is for teaching and learning music. And if I'm going to be honest with you, I have no idea. There's so many opinions out there, so many different ideas of what the proper philosophy for teaching is. So today we're going to be taking a look at those and finding what my own voice will be. So I think the foundation for my philosophy should be being a good teacher. But what does this mean? In the article, The Nature of Expertise by Duke and Simmons, good teaching is defined as affecting positive change in students' performances. Strange, Ward, and Grant add to this in the article, What Makes Good Teachers Good? by defining effective teachers as teachers whose students experience high academic growth. Keeping these definitions in mind, what qualities make for a good teacher? A good teacher can be smart, kind, caring, considerate, calm, patient, even funny, flexible, helpful, dedicated, and yeah, many more. Thinking of it this way can get sort of overwhelming. Qualities of a good teacher are clarified in a chart found within the article by Strange, Ward, and Grant. This chart puts an emphasis on responsibility, management, relationships, organization, and caring as the top five qualities of a good teacher. But how do we condense all of this into one philosophy? Let's check in with some of the famous teachers from the movies. And, and Marta here, she's, 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 she can hit an A above high C. Did you know that? Because that's tough. Not many singers can do that. And, and, uh, 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 Summer, Summer is going to be the first woman president of the United States of America, and she could run later this year even, and I would vote for her. Look, you guys, they're just all really cool kids. And if they were mine, I would be so proud. And I am proud just to even know them. And, um, sir, can I see you in the hall for a moment? What Dewey lacks in structure and responsibility, he makes up for in a love for the subject material he teaches and for his students. We have zero tolerance for cell phones in class, so we will get to know each other in detention. Cell phone! And welcome to East High, Miss Montez. Mr. Bolton, I see your phone is involved, so we will see you in detention as well. No, 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 that's not even a possibility, Miss Darbus, Your Honor, because we have basketball practice in Troy. Ah, that will be 15 minutes for you too, Mr. Danforth. Count them. That could be tougher, Chad, since he probably can't count that high. Taylor McKessie, 15 minutes. <gasps> Shall the carnage continue? Holidays are over, people. Way over. While Ms. Darbus has good intentions of keeping focus within the classroom, her methods for achieving this are ineffective as they are based through punishment. Well, that helped to narrow things down. Now let's hear from some of my personal colleagues. First, let's take a look at a friend of mine who's finishing her last year in high school. When interviewing her, I asked if she planned on making music a part of her future. This was her answer. It was a fun hobby, but it became tedious and stressful when I began to be marked for it. This shows the impact that a teacher can have. Though she loved the subject, she encountered some stressful situations with teachers who didn't know what they were doing, and this took it away from her. Next, let's take a look at my high school music teacher, whose approach was clear, inspirational, and helpful, making him one of my favorites. I discussed his philosophy of teaching with him in an interview, as it's something I wish to recreate in the future. He stressed the importance of always being flexible, as you never know what's going to happen in the classroom, and each student you meet has different needs. He also described that his thoughts on teaching have changed over time. He used to think that being a teacher meant, I have more knowledge than you, and I am here to give you that knowledge directly. Now it means facilitating learning and showing students how to learn on their own. Now that we've heard what they all have to say, what's my philosophy? I've decided that my philosophy for teaching music is that good teaching comes from passion. Whether this is a passion for the material you teach, for the students in your class, or even for teaching itself, this is what makes good teachers. My vision for an ideal music teaching context includes a classroom setting in which students are given the chance to observe the performances of their teachers and professionals. They would then be given the chance to imitate what they see. They'd also get the opportunity to create original compositions, arrangements, and remixes, much like that described in the article toward convergence adapting music education to contemporary society and participatory culture by E.S. Tobias. Thanks for joining me on my search for my philosophy in teaching music. If you'd like to do any further readings, check out my references. Bye!